So hi all. Thanks for joining. Um, this is one of our first bold live sessions and uh, they're basically designed as members only meetups where we discuss evergreen business topics as well as just agency trends in general. And here with us today from, as we mentioned, all the way over in Phoenix, Arizona, Nick uh, from Lane Terra Labor. Yeah, we're calling it LT now because it's such a hard name to pronounce. Uh, so yeah, exactly. calling it LT. That's what the clients and our friends call us anyway. So okay, made sense. What about your agency background? You've been with LT for a while, right? Yeah, over a decade, I think now. Worked at a couple agencies before that, but yeah, over a decade at, at LT. And uh, yeah, that held various roles here on biz dev, marketing, partnership roles, uh, and, and currently uh, lead all the, the marketing and partnership efforts for the agency. Great. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of noise out there on how to fill your pipeline and keep work coming in, especially, you know, you know, in the past year or so, things have been pretty rough for agencies. And so many yep. of us are using a, a mix of channels uh, and tactics from live events and PR agencies uh, or using them at least from time to time, referral programs, then, uh, you know, thought leadership content, LinkedIn, newsletters, yep. uh, then there are partnerships. Um, so yeah, like a lot of us, a lot of people have um, gotten back to me with some questions. In general, if you guys feel like just jumping in or waiting until the end, that's fine. Uh, I think first things first, like how would you define partnerships as a marketing strategy or channel? Yeah, and first of all, uh, thanks for having me. And and all those strategies or tactics you just listed are all, all things we've done um, and can be successful. Uh, you know, I don't, I don't believe that there's one, one thing that works best. Uh, it's just a matter of like, what's the right mix for you and finding the right people, right? Like, yeah, every agency has hired an external PR person and we've hired good ones. We've hired bad ones. We've done, we've tried it all. Um, but to your question about partnerships, yeah, it, it's funny, like on my LinkedIn, like, cause I have partnerships in my title. I always get the job. I always get job postings popping up in my LinkedIn for partnership roles. And most of them are at tech companies. Uh, and when I just like read those descriptions really briefly, it's so different than what I do. I mean, maybe not that different, but it's, it, it is quite different. Um, so I, I think the way I, I'll just answer how, how we define partnerships. I think there's kind of two main categories for us. Uh, one is tech partnerships and the other is what I would call almost like research or thought leadership partnerships. Um, Tech partnerships is probably something we've been doing longer. Um, so tech partnerships would be every anything from uh, could be uh, uh, partnering with a CMS, being part of a partner program for a CMS provider, right? Sitecore is one that we've we've had been a part of the partner program for for quite some time, right? That's a .NET content management system. Um, to, I mean, even down to like hosting providers, right? WP Engine, who who hosts a lot of our WordPress sites, you know, been a part of their partner partnership program for quite some time. So that that's the tech partnership side of it. Then on the research or thought leadership side of things, uh, this is the area I think we focused on more more recently, and I would say this is the area that we've seen a lot more success. Um, and this is everything from partnering with an association in a given industry to uh, could be partnering with a certain publication from an industry or a analyst uh, if if you're if you're talking about an industry that that has analysts covering it right like analysts mm -hmm. on Wall Street. Um, so those are kind of the the two two areas. I think the tech partnerships there's established programs, right? Um, the downside to the tech partnership side of things if you're not like one of their top partners you basically get ignored, right? And I think we've always been on the tech partnership side, like a, a step below the top. So they've always, you know, they like us, but we don't get the full uh, full love from some of those tech partners uh, that we would that we would want. But I understand it because, you know, we're not their top partner uh, in terms of driving uh, revenue uh, for them. Um, but on the thought leadership and kind of research side of things, working with association analysts and things like that, I think it's a little bit more blue ocean. Like it's not, 
like there's not going to be an established partner program. This is where you have, I think a lot of agency people like being creative and doing new things. And that's more on the thought leadership and research side of things where you don't have an established program and you have to come in and kind of figure something out. And it might be the first time they've ever partnered with someone on, on doing some research or thought leadership. And uh, yeah, it makes it a little bit more difficult because there's no real like clear guidelines in most cases. Yeah. Um, but uh, I think really, really fruitful if done right. So. Yeah. No, as you said, blue ocean, there are so many opportunities. You can really get creative, but at, I'm sure that at, at times that could also seem a bit frustrating because there are so many ways you can go. Um, yep. And on that note, like for an agency that's just considering partnerships, where should they start? Yeah, that's uh, that's a good it's a good question. Um, I think probably the first place is just to assess where you're currently at uh, and giving an honest assessment of where, whether it be industries or technologies, where you truly are an expert. So um, when I look at partnerships. And when you're reaching out to whether it be a tech company or let's talk more specifically around like research and thought leadership groups, I think you want to make sure that it's a really easy conversation for you to have if you're able to get the door open and talk to them about a potential partnership. So assess where you're at and where you truly are an expert. Um, then I think I, I'll just go based on what we've done. Uh, and, and we started really investing in this about five years ago. And I would say about two years ago is when we started seeing really like robust growth from it um, is doing the, I mean, it, it worked right out the gate, but again, it, it's a little bit slower to to get going is, is doing whatever you're thinking of proposing to a potential partner, start doing that work on your own, uh, even without the partnership uh beforehand so an example uh we do a lot of work in the uh attractions industry right location-based entertainment attractions right we a couple years ago so the reason we decided to go after that is we've done a ton of work in that space both re regionally and nationally here in in the u.s we decided to uh go in and do consumer research about that audience uh, mm -hmm. before we even had a partnership established. So we said, hey, we're going to go out, do the research about that audience and understand how families are experiencing this, how Gen Z, how the affluent and all those difference. And we went in and we put together a report. We didn't have a partner at the time. We did it on our own. And we just marketed that through our own channels. You mentioned earlier, PR agency, yeah. all the channels, a little bit of paid media. And it was a success. It wasn't like a huge success, but um, we were we were pleased with it. But I say start there and start doing some of the things that you would propose to a potential partner uh, before you even have a partner, because then it made it really easy. Because earlier this year, the main industry association for attractions, we were able to get a connection there, and when we ended up having a conversation with the CEO. He said, oh, can you give examples of when you've done this in the past? Sure. It's really nice and easy to be able to send them over a PDF and say, hey, we've done this actually two years ago, a specific, we do something very similar. Take a look at this. What do you think? They open it, they look at it and they're like, oh, this is amazing, right? And, oh, we've never done this before. So, you know, it sounds a little counterintuitive. I mean, obviously, if you can establish a partnership at the onset and you have a relationship with someone, uh, yes, go for that. But I think in a lot of cases, you're, you're gonna have to do a little bit of the work on the front end uh, to, to make it easier to establish partnerships, um, at least with the bigger associations or whatnot. Sure, but it makes sense. Because even if you already have something that you that you're, you know, that you've treaded in and, and really understand and have seen some um, interest in like in terms of content, why not push yep. it out and then try to look for a partner in the meantime, and yeah, that's that's great actually. And how do you identify? Okay, this is kind of related, but um, would you would you suggest that people go this way or identify kind of like a partner first? Like, what does one need to consider when going and looking for a partner? Um, so the, the, like what I mentioned earlier with the know where your expertise is, and then whether it be industry or a certain technology. 
uh, and going for the ones that you're actually already good at rather than, oh, this is an area that's growing. I think that's a good place to start. But also like, I, I would say mindset wise of the partner is really important to identify. Um, I think the partner needs to have some form of skin in the game. Um, so on the tech partnership side of things, usually those partnerships involve some form of referral agreement and stuff like that. So that's, that's easy. Like it's clear. It's like, Hey, you bring us this work, you get compensated in this way. So that's yeah. kind of straightforward. I think on the type of partnerships I'm talking about with the research and thought leadership, it's a lot you're not going to be able to establish agreements like that. And that's not what's going to motivate an association or an analyst. If anything, like they can't take any form of compensation. So, which is a good thing, uh, but it also makes it more complicated because you're like, you have to figure out what motivates them. Like, right. So in the, in the case of some of the recent ones we've done, I, I think the the thing to identify is, yeah, like what what's in it for them and how do we get them to have some form of skin in the game? So in these cases, we're doing consumer research and publishing a report and we're doing that jointly with them. Um, I think if they're not the one putting up the money or doing the work, uh, an easy way to kind of like give them some skin in the game is to them for them to agree to launch this at one of their events or to like put a date out there in their marketing materials that says, hey, we're going to publish this with XYZ group in two months or whatever it might be. Um, that motivates them uh, to, if there's hiccups along the way, and there always will be hiccups, to be in uh, kind of in that fight with you to, to help solve those problems when, when potential hiccups come up. So I think, yeah, getting someone, uh, getting some skin in the game for them, uh, non-monetary being kind of the key on, on some of these type of partnerships I'm talking about. And then also just, I, this might sound obvious, but looking at associations or analyst groups, it's really, you're, it's kind of influencer marketing, if you will, for, for B2B, right? Yeah. Like these are people that should be influential in a target industry or technology that you're looking to expand in. And yeah, I think the key is just like understanding maybe talking to others in that industry to understand what their real influence is. Um, and yeah, just making sure that that pie or that, that sphere of influence they have is much bigger than, than what you currently have. So. Sure. I mean, now we're already hearing a couple of uh, best practices uh, that you've implemented or that have kind of like um, risen through your, through your work, but um, what else would you say is something that's, that's um that's a good practice to to take into consideration. Um, I would say, well, here I'll say this: like thinking like, like uh, one of the bigger challenges to overcome, I think, is 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 establishing establishing the partnerships, right? Like getting that foot in the door just to have a conversation with them. Usually mm -hmm. when you have a conversation with someone about this and it's, hey, we're going to do this research for you or I don't know who's online, but like it might be, hey, we're going to assess 100 mobile apps in your industry and rank them by X, Y, Z, whatever it might be, right? Mm -hmm. Usually people are like, oh, that sounds interesting. Like it's like, wow, that sounds great. Um, but getting the foot in the door to even have that conversation can sometimes be difficult. I think the key is figuring out at your agency who the right person is to try to make that connection. Um, yes, I'm the head of marketing and partnerships, but I, for our last three partnerships, it hasn't been me doing the outreach to try to get that door open. Mm -hmm. um, but I've been like the mastermind behind it, figuring out who we need to reach out to and like what's a value to them and all that stuff. We're lucky in that we have an advisor to our agency that's uh, written a couple books and like uh, had, writes writes uh, for Forbes uh, on occasion, and um, we've leveraged him as kind of our our foot in the door to a lot of these. Because um, so that's a unique scenario; everyone doesn't have that. But um, 
I would just say, yeah, just figure out like who would be the best person. Just, like, it's not like, oh, go hire a partnerships person and just like hope for the best. Like if you're the founder or CEO, like it's probably going to be you, right? That they're going to leverage to try to get into some of these just from a credibility standpoint. So mm -hmm. something, something to consider. What about like throughout the, throughout the like process of a, pro a partnership, whether, you know, you decide to partner up with someone for, I don't know, a quarter or a month or six months or whatever you decide, like, is it, is it, um, is it also hard to manage expectations? Yeah, it is. <laughs> Must be like, um, sometimes you're okay. We're picking up more slack here. We expected more from you. Like, how do you communicate those? This, um... Oh man, I wish I had the answers. Um, <laughs> no, that's inevitable. And at least I, I'll just give on our side of things. So like for us, this sort of like a research project in this case isn't run the way a client research project would be run. Yeah. Um, Cause there's not like a budget associated with it in that case. And yeah, we run into that a lot. Um, there's always little, yeah difficulties in communication i the way i look at it is just like if we have if we've established a partnership especially if we're brought in like at an association level like with the ceo of an association the way i look at it is just like we're going to do everything we can to like go at this 110 percent, right like above and beyond and sometimes like a term we use like gold plating it like it, you know at an agency you don't want too many people gold plating everything because then everything becomes really expensive but i say if we've established the right partnership in an industry we want like we're going to gold plate things a little bit and sometimes the internal team that i'm working with can get frustrated by that because they're like oh yeah this is like this is good enough and i'm like yeah but like we're gonna have all the top people in the industry reading this so like it needs to be a little bit better even when we think it's done it needs to continue to be a little bit better so i think a big part of it is actually managing your internal team's expectations because you're anytime you do some sort of partner kind of a high value piece of content i think it needs to be really like you only have one chance to kind of make that impression yeah. um, and we've had partnerships that started and didn't continue um again you don't you never really know the full reason and then we've had other partnerships that you know turn into like kind of multi-year things so right, yeah. um managing that internal team's like expectations of what success looks like uh it can be a little bit difficult and yeah we get some pushback from the external partner from time to time and um you know they might be more nitpicky than we are about certain things and i don't know i yeah like i said we just kind of uh go above okay. and beyond just to make sure yeah. that they're happy <laughs> Yeah, it's a good thing to to note, kind of like understand that it's, it really relies on, at the end of the day, like many things, it relies more on you and how you're going to manage your internal team than yep. um, actually what you how much you can influence the partner and what they do. Yep. Um, are there any specific industries where partnerships are particularly beneficial and generate particularly high quality leads results? Or at least that you've I mean, honored. I think it can I think it could be I think it could be any industry. I mean, two most recent ones we've done are in the attraction space. And then the next one we have is in the casino space, which we're launching one in, in January. Um and both of those have been great. Actually, casino a little bit better. We've we've done a number of them in that space. Uh I would say, well, here, I, I'll just mention a couple of things, which is any industry that has that is has publicly traded companies in it and has like Wall Street analysts covering it, I think are good targets to go after. So uh, as an example, casino space, not surprisingly, very big industry, has a lot of analysts from all the major investment banks covering covering that space attractions uh not as much so in the casino space we typically partner with analysts because they are the go-to source of knowledge in the casino space at least in the commercial casino space in the u.s um right the mgms the caesars the wins if you're familiar with that space all those words um the in the attraction space there's less big publicly traded companies 
right? The, yes, there's Disney, Universal, Merlin, if you're familiar with any of these names, um, Six Flags, Cedar Fair, but there's not as many. So it's not really like at most investment banks, they don't have a analyst covering uh, attractions. And because that's the case, there was like a very limited number of analysts to even reach out to regarding like partnering. So that's why we ended up going the association route. Um, uh, so I don't think there's an answer to like, like oh, one is better than. Yeah, it's kind yeah. of like identifying who's who's the who's the influencer. <laughs> yeah, higher education. That's another industry uh, we work in, and uh, not surprising. Yes, there's ed tech companies, right? So that's where you have analysts and things like that. But most of what we're talking about is that is the actual schools not publicly traded for the most part um that's an association industry right like you have to go for the right associations and get get in front of them um so yeah ultimately you just said it it's it's really an influencer marketing play at for b2b oh. sure. i saw we had a question um from yeah. Boyan here so regarding expectations from partnerships um time frames when is it too early or too late to make some conclusions about the whole partnership well a whole partnership yeah yeah um good question uh i'll just give a recent example in the attractions industry we did a report i think we established the part uh, just give the timeline on this like well i think we established the intent to do the research partnership back in July, I want to say, uh, of 2023. Uh, the research project probably took about three months from ideation to actually launching the report in November at their at their annual event. Um, and I would say by June, I mean, earlier than June, probably, we will be able to say whether or not it was a success. I mean, early signs are definitely that it's a success um, because they had us speak at the conference. We're doing a webinar, and I think it's February with them. Uh, they might bring us back to another event. Um, but yeah, will we see like immediate revenue? Like, in did we already see revenue in November from this? No. Um, but I think you can at least see signs i would say within a year you should have revenue within a year of, of a partnership i mean that's yeah i mean for sure um but um i'd also like like some of the like the smaller things you can look at that that aren't like revenue related to to see if it's going to be a successful partnership is like say it's a research partnership in this case see what other things that they're inviting you to do in their ecosystem. Like the more things that they get you involved in, I think that is a higher uh, likelihood of success, right? Sure. Like we've had one partnership where we just did some research and we launched the research and that was kind of it, right? And then we've had other ones where they invite us to speak at their event. And they're like, oh, let's do a webinar. Oh, can we do this? Can we go talk to the press about this? Like there's a wide, so I think we all just know like the latter, the the latter example is just going to be more successful, right? So the more entrenched you can become with, with whatever group it is that you're partnering with, um, the better. But I would say revenue-wise, you should be able to see something within a year. Mm -hmm. um, we had one question that uh, a member of ours sent over. It was about, um, like, in terms of uh, coordinating with partners when it comes to brand messaging, have you ever encountered any problems there are there things that you need to set up at the start yeah um i'm probably not the best at this to be honest uh but yeah uh i honestly our approach has been to go with kind of go with whatever the partner wants right like the goal is to make them comfortable like we're more flexible in general right and um some partners are super strict you're talking to an investment bank i mean you're talking extremely strict like every little detail is scrutinized every, every word i mean they can't put something out that right i mean you're talking regulations and 
yeah, financial regulations and all that good stuff. Um, some of the associations are, are are less so. So our our thing has just been be flexible. Ultimately, we're looking to get in front of a larger audience than we're currently in front of, and they have access to that. So uh, uh, we've done reports that, as a from brand perspective, we designed them in the you know brand colors and brand look of 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 the group we are partnering with, and then we've done other ones where they're like, oh, you could do it however you want. You know, just throw our logo on there and we'll help write um, some of the sections, right? Like, or we'll help with the analysis of it. Um, so it just, it depends. But mm -hmm. flexibility has kind of been the name name of the game for us. Oh, great. Um, next up, what KPIs? Well, you did mention, you mentioned some things, but like what KPIs should be monitored to measure the success of a partnership? Um so you mentioned like um, previously, you just said that um, that it's good to to see that partners are really trying to get you like all through their ecosystem, like in in yeah. very different channels, and and even if like have you actually here's like a follow up question to that actually, um, do you do you ever see partners really caring about bringing you business and going the extra mile to check up on like any leads that they've potentially brought you like will they will they say like okay let me try to do something else introduce you to someone else yeah um i would say i've 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 seen more of that like the follow on and really like what in in the tech partnership side of things and i think that's because right at a sitecore wp engine again just two examples they have partnership people, like they have partnership teams, right? So like part of their whole business model is making their partners happy, right? Meanwhile, an association, I mean, the last this association we partnered with on this, like they were like, everyone was just like, oh, wow, we feel like never done something like this before. So uh, in that case, you're not, generally people aren't going to like not help you i think i found that people are generally always helpful um but i'm learning that you might have to be very explicit with how they can help you yeah um because yeah it's not something they're used to and like uh, they, they they just might not know how to best help you so i mean when you're doing something a partner partner thought leadership with someone and and if you do a good job, I mean they're gonna see great value. And I think just being explicit with how they can help is is probably the the best thing because those organizations generally won't like have that as part of their business model. Sure. Uh, so not gonna go out someone of might just not be think yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So but, yeah, that's but I mean good piece of advice, like be explicit and just like kind of, you know, ask or else you won't get. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hundred percent. Uh, so another question from the audience, how do you evaluate the return from a partnership project? I mean, hard metrics are obvious, a number, like number of leads and calls. What about soft metrics, like branding, brand metrics? Yeah, I think, uh, so I, I mean, going to this, yes, revenue is obviously going to be the number of deals, revenue associated with those deals. Those are the obvious hard metrics. Um, also, what we generally look at is, so a lot of the introductions we've gotten where people have reached out are people that reach out not regarding like a specific project, right? Like we're a marketing and customer experience agency. A lot of times an intro we're getting isn't like, hey, this person has a marketing challenge and they need an agency. A lot of time it's been, hey, these guys uh, really know the space. We partnered with them on this research. Like I know you downloaded the report or whatever, and you had some questions around it. So like leads, I think just getting comfortable with the idea that like leads might not always be someone that like has a need for your services right at that moment um, mm -hmm. and being willing to go on a lot of like dates, whatever you want to call them, where you're just like talking and sharing your knowledge. Um, I think that's one of the things that you have to get comfortable with. The other thing I would say on the on this side of things is like it's led to a lot more relationships more at the C-suite level. 
uh, which is good, but also like when you're at the C, depends on the size of the company, but when you're at the C-suite level, generally there's less detail discussed and more, right? Like, hey, we're having this challenge with the customer experience, right? Like the, just all the touch points, just it, it's not connected well and we're getting complaints. Da, da. The difficulty is like sometimes agencies, we get really like good at like responding to RFPs or like responding to a scope of work, which has like a clear set of deliverables. And when you get brought in at that C-suite level, especially if it's a CEO or president, we've learned we just have to get better at navigating to get that conversation in the hands of the person that's like, can kind of put pen to paper, if you will. Um, mm -hmm. Otherwise it stays kind of up here in the uh, more esoteric and can make it difficult to kind of move a deal along. And a lot of times when you get that kind of introduction, it's not a pitch where you're pitching against others. It's a idea that a CEO or president has or a challenge and they're kind of asking you to come back creatively with what do you think we should be doing? So that creates some challenges in and of itself, but uh, I mean, we'll take that challenge over responding to RFPs all day. So, yeah. but it's still a challenge. I will, I will just say that it's still a challenge. <laughs> um, I think like we had another question on, you know, how basically something that we covered already. So what if I don't get new business? Like how, how long should I stay and whatnot? But I think we covered that last question from my end. Do you have any particular, any particularly really great partnership you'd like to single out and why? Yeah. I mean, I, I really like our most recent one, which is with this attractions industry organization and it's an association. And like I said earlier, like the reason I like it is they've brought us into their entire ecosystem. It hasn't just been a consumer research project, but it's been, Hey, come speak at our event. Hey, let's do a webinar. Hey, how can we help get this in front of the media? Like, it's cool. Cause like they seem proactive. They seem equal. Yeah, proactive, but they're also like invested in it. Like they want it to be successful. Yeah. Uh, I think part of that, and this is just, this is was not strategic in nature. This just happened to be the case. There was a new CEO at the association, right? So mm -hmm. now I'm just thinking out loud, like that might be an interesting way of thinking about it too, is like, if you have experience in healthcare and there's XYZ association, maybe looking to the ones where there are new association leadership where they want to establish their presence and the way they've been doing things and maybe try something new. I haven't thought about it that way before, but maybe I, maybe I am in 2024, but um, that could be an interesting way. Um, Cause then you can be a part of kind of their, their new success as, as, as a leader of the organization. Kind of interesting. Yeah. No, I, I think it's definitely um, good to look at it from that perspective. Like both parties are getting something from it. Um, I think maybe the worst feeling is like that one side is really, you know, doing a lot of the work, putting in a lot of effort. And then the other is just like, okay, let me just move A to B and just do the bare minimum. But um, I guess, you know, these things filter out with time and then when you get smarter and better next time. Um, 100%. And I'll just say one last thing, reiterating, like, you're going to have to ask for things that might feel uncomfortable at times to get the most out of it. Like yeah. I am pretty comfortable asking for things from people, but even me at points, I'm like, ah, oh, damn, like I have to remind myself we have to, it, it's, it feels uncomfortable, but, but keep asking for more. So, um, yeah, I think having someone that has a little bit of that business development mindset involved in any sort of partner program is key. Mm -hmm. And then also having that like more marketing and content person that can help actually create whatever it is you've decided to partner and create. Mm -hmm. I think having those two kind of roles in it uh, is, is, is in my opinion, key to, key to making it a, a success. We covered a lot here and thanks so much for your time, Nick. I mean, many of these things can seem can seem obvious, but they're, they take a lot of trial and error to, to really to like no to bake into your system of feels obvious now but yeah it took a lot of time to get there so um i guess it's not like um you know you won't see quick returns maybe always it's always like a 
a game of patience as well. So. Yeah, and I think if you invest in partnerships and things in an area that you're already doing a lot of work in, if the actual partnership doesn't materialize in the very immediate term into like revenue, at least you can use that asset to go to, you know, your clients in that space, go to previous clients or their friends of friends. Like, um, you know, that's why I really like encourage yeah. to like invest in the areas where you're already like doing stuff. Uh, and this is just an amplification of that. Um, yeah. cause that kind of mitigates the downside risk rather than going for kind of a, new industry that you know maybe you don't have that much experience but it's like growing very fast but good good tips thanks so much for your time uh guys uh i'll send over the recording we'll let you know uh how it goes and if anyone else has any questions cool cool all right thanks so good thanks have a so nice much. day and have a nice evening whoever's in my time zone <laughs> there you go bye all right bye maria bye